Thanks for being with us, guys. I know, like everybody, summer's gone really quick. Uh, you know, we have all of our guys at this time on campus. Uh, we had Josh Mabala, who had to be a grad transfer, graduated from Buffalo, and has been here for a couple of weeks. Uh, Malik Ewing probably been on campus about about four weeks. Both those guys are adjusting and and doing really well. Um, you know, right now we're kind of uh, with both things going on from a recruiting standpoint, you know, busy month of July and recruiting around college basketball and then kind of integrating the, the practices, getting ready for our foreign trip uh, to the Atlantis. So today is our very first day. You get 10 workouts. And so today is our very first one that you can get the extra practices. So we spread them out through the month of July. We'll do maybe three this week and we spread them out until we leave on on July 31st. So excited about our team, uh, you know, good blend. Obviously you guys know of the eight new guys and the four freshmen, four transfers. And then uh, obviously with the six guys returning and uh, four of those guys are, are on the floor right now. And Deshaun and Robert are doing some individual uh, rehab and on the floor individual workouts by themselves with no contact. Joe, go ahead. All right, Coach, uh, I guess I got a question for one of the returners and one of the new guys, of course. But first, um, how's Deshaun doing? How is his rehab going? Um, I know you guys posted some clips of him, you know, to get some shots. What has his recovery been like? And what's the uh, transition been like for Javis McKinnis coming in from JSU? Yeah, uh, you know, Deshaun's rehab, both those guys, but Deshaun's ahead of schedule. Uh, God, I've been so impressed with the maturity level. And it's not the easiest thing for a young guy, you know, especially when he did his hand, then he had his knee. And, uh, but he is, he's doing individuals uh, skill development on the floor. There's some limits of what he can do. Uh, he's not going to do any contact with us this summer. Uh, you know, in the fall, we sure hope September, that area right there, that, that Deshaun's going to be on the floor with us. And uh, so we're excited about, about where he's at from a rehab standpoint. Uh, Javis McKinnis has been one of our biggest surprises. Um, obviously, you know him, you, you saw him. He's going to be one of the most athletic forwards in college basketball, period. And, uh, and I just think that, boy, he's really starting to develop more skill level, uh, playing face in the floor. Uh, he's spectacular around the rim, uh, lobs and playing behind the defense. But I just, his overall approach to how he's getting better and what he's doing in the weight room, uh, yeah, we're really, really pleased with Jay. Nick. Hey, Kermit, just what's your approach right now to what you're trying to see this month? Obviously, new coaches, new players, a lot of new faces everywhere. What are you trying to gauge right now this far out from the season? Yeah, you, you know, Nick, I think everybody in college basketball, you know, with a roster with eight new players, and obviously you're trying to build toughness together, you know, and that's kind of what we've talked about. We've kind of a little slogan of forward rebels, you know, that we're just looking forward and with the guys that, that we have uh, on our team. And, and it's not a coaching cliche. We're really, I thought that in our team, we didn't have good enough pace last year, when, especially when Deshaun got hurt. So we're really of, of how fast and we're trying to play uh, off of misses and, and in a way of really trying to get some easy baskets and transition. You know, when you play on a foreign trip, you know, you really start implementing, you, get, you, you speed your process up, which I think is a good thing. And it makes you better the quicker you can get to five on five. So, you know, we start integrating some more offensive concepts where we can play some five on five. But I say the biggest thing, Nick, is just, you know, our guys being together, uh, leadership things, you know, like you can look at, and, and Lane made the point we're talking about on the Rebel road trip, you know, you can put all these kind of super teams together in the NBA and sometimes they don't work, you know, it's because they don't mesh together. So there's a lot of things about just getting good transfers, new young guys, the blend of returning guys, you know, how you play together, being a good teammates, all those kind of things from on the floor and leadership has been a big focus. Jared. I think Joe kind of talked, touched on a little bit when talking about Javius. Just your thoughts on just this roster defensively now that you have three or four players in the portal that were formerly defensive player of the years in their respective conferences. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I think obviously, you know, Javis, what he's done, uh, Theo, who you'll visit with in just a few minutes, uh, you know, defensive player of the year a couple of years ago. He got hampered kind of with a little stress reaction last year, uh, shot blocking ability, uh, being able to guard around the goal. Josh Mabala is another guy that, uh, he's only been here two weeks, but you can tell his physicality. 
got a great motor. Miles uh, burns him. Obviously, Miles, you know, led college basketball in offensive rebounds and steals. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be a much more aggressive defensive team. Uh, I think we'll be able to play our 1-3-1. We haven't worked on it yet, but it's going to be something that we're going to be able to do a uh, much higher level uh, than last year. So, yeah, it's, it'll, it'll be a deeper, more athletic, physical team that, that you can go and be really, really competitive in the non-conference and, and for sure in the SEC. John Sokoloff, go ahead. Hey, Kermit. Sorry, uh, my, my video, some technical difficulties on our end over here, but um, kind of talking about Deshaun, I mean, how much are you kind of looking for him to take a next step in, in his sophomore year for, for you guys, you think? Well, you know, I know if he was totally healthy, he was, he was going to be the top two or three point guards in the league last year. And uh, he's got great basketball IQ. I mean, I, I do say this, we've got some really good uh, freshman guards that are going to be terrific. Uh, Mari and TJ and Robert. Uh, but I think that Deshaun and Matt are the most, probably one of the most underrated backcourts in college basketball. I mean, and, and I really say that in a meaningful way because I know their talent, what kind of people they are. The biggest thing is just getting Deshaun fully healthy, you know, physically. And uh, when he does that, uh, I mean, he's been doing a ton of shooting. So that may be a blessing in disguise. He's, he's really shooting the ball well and just some workout drills, threes and twos. Uh, Matt's off to a good start. Been under the weather. Would have been with us today, but he's under the weather right now. Uh, so for two or three days, but uh, he's had a great, great spring and summer. Nick. You talked about uh, Deshaun's timeline a little bit. Is there a rough timeline for Rob as well, or is that something that's day to day? Yeah, you know, Nick, Robert is, Robert's way ahead of schedule. And I mean, it's unbelievable what he's done. He's he's really kind of going through live one-on-one -on -one work, not just one-on-zero workouts. He's moving, cutting, shooting. He's not going to be with our team at all either in the summer. Uh, you know, I really think, you know, September 1, Robert will start integrating into some non-contact with our team, but fast-paced, full speed. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, sometimes those injuries take a year, you know, to heal. But I think right now Robert is, is well advanced in that. Uh, but again, it's just going to be kind of how he feels. Uh, but we hope that we have Robert in contact stuff. He and Deshaun both by October 1st, by official practice. I think we will. I mean, it may be, and it may be in a limited situation, depending on how they do. Sure. Coach James White was a guy who got a lot more minutes as the year went on last year. Um, you said, you know, he wants to be a good basketball player uh, late in the year. Have, have you, you kind of seen him grow since then? Do you expect him to kind of take the next step next this year? I sure hope so. I mean, James, God, he's, he's, he's grown. He's well over 6'5". He's, he's gained like 19 pounds. He's 202 pounds. Uh, I mean, he just lives in the gym. I think James has made a big step athletically and from a maturity standpoint, working his tail off. You know, the biggest thing for James is now in the five-on-five, five, you know, be able to play mate, really defend in, in a team setting. He's making progress and all those different things. So we think James is going to have a really good year. Joe. Yeah. Yeah, Kermit, you mentioned the backcourt with Deshaun and Matt. And um, I just remember, you know, with, with, with the injuries and how last year ended and then going to, into this offseason, are you guys having conversations with Matt in terms of like, hey, his next step of development? You kind of look at him like, hey, you're going to be like our guy, you know, in the sense of we need a lot of production out of you this year to kind of set the tone and care. So you looking like more of a leadership role for him this season? Yeah, you know, we haven't really talked in terms of scoring, Joe, but we've talked a lot about the uh, the leadership, you know, about Matt's team being in three years, Robert Allen, you know, obviously been here, and and both those guys have great leadership qualities. You hear their voice a lot more. Uh, I hear Matt's voice a lot more. Uh, you know, Matt and I watch tape every single day. I mean, you can just – it reminds me of TD going into his his senior year. And, uh, you know, I think just, just Matt's progression. You know, t guys, different time level. Now you see the NBA is drafting more older guys than they ever have. Finally, the NBA figured it out, you know, that the, the experience will help you win, you know, if it's really good players. And so you see that in college basketball. And so a guy like Matt, you know, is – Three years here, he's made great pro uh, progression, freshman, sophomore year, and he's just on a great track to have a great junior year. Jared. Coach, working with the new staff with, you know, Brock Morris and Robert Kirby, all the, you know, that I know it's been brief so far as they've been hired and, and you had the chance to work with them, but what's it been like working alongside them thus far? Yeah, they just, it's, it's a great blend for our staff. 
Uh, you know, Robert Kirby obviously has been in our state for a lot of years and won a lot of games, been in the SEC at LSU, uh, obviously from Memphis, worked at Memphis, came from Georgetown. Robert and I have known each other for a long, long time. He just is a really good coach on the floor, just great staff member. Uh, Brock Morris is one of the most up and coming young assistants in the country. I've known Brock for, for a lot of years and kind of kept my own Brock. And uh, so, yeah, he's, uh, he's been, they're both been very valuable in the recruiting process so far. And, uh, you know, you can see we have one commitment in the 23 and, uh, and hopefully are close in the next couple months, you know, of adding uh, some more really good players to the 23 class.